Hi, I'm David Lee Good from Greasy Grooving. I'm going to show you how to do a tracing of a pick guard. I'm going to use this Jazzmaster pick guard because it's kind of complicated. We have a few different holes on there, etc. So we're going to first of all find a piece of paper big enough, okay? Then we're going to choose a pencil. Uh, please don't use sharpies or anything that's ink based because the ink tends to soak into the paper and gives us a wide line. And we need something a little more accurate than that to be able to do the uh, pit guard profiling from. So a pencil, a nice sharp pencil is perfect. So I'm going to first of all draw around the perimeter. If you notice here, I'm just taking my time as I go around. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping the, the lead on the pencil pointing towards the guard and pointing towards the edge of the guard as I go around and trace. So I'm keeping the lead pushed up against the side of the pit guard and making sure that we don't have a gap because the more accurate you are with the tracing the more accurate we can be with actually manufacturing your new pit guard. So once we've gone around the perimeter, I believe we've just done that. Okay, we're going to go around the holes in the pickups. So we take a time again, keeping the pencil pointed against the area that we're drawing against. We're going to take a time, go around all the profiles, make sure we don't create any gaps, and draw around the perimeter of the pickup routes. Okay, so at this stage we don't want to be moving the uh, pick guard off the paper. We need to keep our hands pressed down so that we're not going to move the pick guard. Having said that, if we do move slightly, we, we have some lines that we can match up to and uh, put the pit guard back in its place. So now we can start and concentrate on the holes. So we need to make sure we get right up against the edge of the holes. Particularly with these square shapes, we want to get a nice bold line in there that's showing us exactly what we're trying to recreate. So. We just proceed going around all of these. Okay, making sure we get every hole. We only need to take a pit guard tracing if it's a pit guard that we don't have a template for. We have many, many pit guards mapped out in our system, so most of the time we'll have it on file, your pit guard. But if we have something special, then this is the process that we use. So we've now drawn around everything, and we have a tracing on the pit guard that shows us exactly uh, the shapes that we're trying to recreate. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the pit guard as I go around the tracing, and I'm gonna mark off all of the beveled holes with a B. So. Let me mark these off. So any of the holes that I see on the pit guard that have a bevel, we're making sure that we capture all of those on the tracing. I think we've got them all there. Then we're going to look at any other features that are on here. So we have a few things to consider. If we take a look around where the neck pocket sits on this particular pit guard, there's a slight chamfer in there, which enables us to get a tool in to be able to adjust the truss rod in the neck. So I'm going to pop the pit guard back over the top of the tracing and just make a quick note on the drawing that around there we have a bevel. And then for the rest of round here, I'm just going to mark that this is straight around here to the bevel. This again up to the bevel there is straight. And the rest of it, all the way around the perimeter, is a bevel. So making a good note of that. 
So now for the holes that we have on the pit guard, we're going to quickly just measure what the size of the holes are. So I notice that these two holes here are half inch diameter. So I'm just going to mark that on the drawing. It just helps us when we take a look at your tracing if we have some measurements because it can confirm what we think may be the case and uh, sometimes it's just nice to have the measurement on there. So in particular I take a look at these slots that are on the pit guard because it's nice if we have the actual measurements of those. The more information you give us the more accurate we can be at creating an exact duplicate for you. Okay. So what I have there is this is a quarter inch on that side and then we have uh, five eighths which is 0.625. Okay, so whatever dimensions you want to put down, if you want to put it in decimal or fractions, that's fine. This one's a slightly different size, so we're going to go ahead and measure that. That is a half inch, so we've got a half inch down this side, and it's a quarter inch across the top. So just a quick check on some of the other holes on here, just to add a little more information in there, half an inch, we have these holes that are exactly one quarter, and then we have this one down here, which is three eighths. Okay, so now just for a little bit of more information on there, I'm going to put the measurement of that, which is one point inches and we're going to measure down here and there we have so we've got 1.3 across here and going this way we've got a four inch a four inch hole going that way so that gives us quite a bit of information to be able to use for your pit guard the last thing you want to do on here of course is write down what it's actually from this is from a jazz master I don't know the year of this one, but let's say it's in 1985. That gives us some information. 1985 Jazzmaster, go ahead, write your name and address on there so that we can link it to your order. And that would be a good pick guard tracing that we could use to manufacture a pick guard. I'm going to show you one here that we had sent in by a customer. This was for a flying V type pick guard, and this is a pick guard that we actually made for that customer from the tracing. So, like I say, the more information you can give us, the better accuracy we're going to be able to give you with creating your new pick card. So that's it.